So last week, we covered Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad videos that were available on YouTube, and I got pretty fired up at the end of those just because Mr. Kiyosaki, at the very end, talked about how loved ones and a 401k are liabilities. And I found this to be not only irresponsible advice, but disturbing advice. And it, it got me so excited, so fired up in response that I forgot to conclude the concept that we were trying to review for last week's main topic, the good debt, bad debt conversation. I talked about how a mortgage is the only debt that I would endorse as a financial coach. And anything else beyond that, I would say, is being an anti-frugal way to use your money. We were evaluating Robert Kiyosaki's good debt and bad debt. And in his world, a good debt, let's forget about what he says about assets and liabilities because it's so backwards and it just distorts our way of looking at the uses of our money because it, it disregards the importance of saving. It ignores giving entirely. It forgets about the idea that an asset adds to your net worth and a liability takes away from your net worth. And it focuses all of its energy onto the idea of your cash flow on your paycheck. So let's ask ourselves, is good debt genuinely good? Is borrowing in order to own an income generating asset a good debt? We know that the, the cost of debt is interest that you pay, and then the risks that you have, risks that could otherwise siphon away the money that you need to cover your four walls, the income that you depend on for other things. For example, you have a, a tenant who gets kicked out and you don't have that rental property generating you income. You still have to service the debt. If you're 100% leveraged on that thing, how are you going to pay for it? And if you have to pull from what your necessities require from you, then that is a risk that I believe to be untenable. Untenable, that's funny. To fully answer the question, let's take a step back and think about debt in a different way. When you borrow money to buy something today that you otherwise can't afford, what you're effectively doing is saying, I want something now. And I want it so much so now that I am willing to pay more for it in the long run in order to have it sooner. If you carry a credit card balance, what you're effectively doing is paying interest in order to have the ability to buy something without actually having saved up for it. When you are looking at money, think about money as an exchange of value. Money is a means of exchanging your value that you create for society. That's, that's how you generate income. Doesn't matter if you are an employee or self-employed or providing for yourself with passive income. When you have money coming to you, it is an exchange for value that you are providing to the outside world beyond your own home. In order to provide value, you need to put forth time and effort. You need to be putting forth energy. Your life is comprised of a finite amount of time. And when you borrow, instead of saving, what you're doing is you're promising away your future time, energy, and effort in exchange for a good now in exchange for a consumable that you want now. Effectively, as you're digging into a well of debt, you are increasingly promising your future away. Very similar to what I did in college when I kept promising I would do things in the future and building up obligations and spreading myself so thin that I no longer had freedom to do things like relax or read or even go out with friends in a way that would be relaxing and simply fun. I gave up my freedom when I did that. And if you dig yourself into a hole of debt, you're effectively selling your future time, your freedom, your life in exchange for something, a thing that you want now. In short, debt is not only the least economical way to be getting things, but it is also sacrificing your freedom, your future, and your happiness your flexibility for the sake of stuff today. On the flip side, if you saved for something, you're exchanging the time that you've already spent providing value for something that you want. If you have already spent the time and effort doing work, providing that value, then you're simply needing to compare the different things that you could possibly 
spend that money on. And you're picking the thing that's going to be most valuable to you at the time that you're spending the money. This gives you a lot more control and it doesn't promise away your freedom. This is why the number one most important number for you to be considering as you pursue a hope-filled financial future that is full of peace and freedom is your savings rate. Your savings rate is comprised of the money, the percentage of your income that you are putting aside into savings and your investments. It doesn't matter if you're investing the money in a 529, in a money market account, a high yield savings account, a taxable account, a 401k, as long as you are saving that money away, doing it in an intentional way that fits the purpose for why you are saving, the percentage of money, the percentage of that income that you're setting aside, the higher that is, the more you are effectively buying your future freedom. If you are saving money, if you're investing money, and you are building up a resource, a nest egg, if you will, that you can draw from, you're effectively buying your time back. You're freeing yourself from needing to go to work in the future so that you can do whatever it is that is most meaningful and purposeful to you. That could be spending time with your family. That could be traveling the world. If you save and invest, not just for retirement, but in general, you don't have to wait until you retire in order to be free. If you save now, you save today, and you buy back, effectively by saving, you buy back your future, your freedom, and your time, then you don't have to go to work. You go to work because you want to, and you do the work that matters to you. You don't have to go to work because you feel forced to or that you have to because you have promised that time away through debt. I know one thing Dave Ramsey says on this topic is the seven dwarves weren't saying, hi-ho, they were saying, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. So in response to the idea of good debt, Robert Kiyosaki's idea of borrowing money to 100% leverage income generating assets like rental properties, what you're effectively doing is you're promising away your future time and effort that you will owe to that asset. To conclude the idea of good debt, if you are borrowing money on something to generate income for the sake of wealth itself, what you're effectively doing is promising away your future freedom, your future time, and your soul for the sake of wealth itself. This is directly contrary to the fact that if you save and you invest in genuine assets that could start providing for you better than you could with just your time and work, then you can buy back your future and give yourself a meaningful freedom. How cool would it be to do work just because you want to? You don't need to. You are provided for. You have saved to the point that you have a perpetual self-sustaining future. You are financially independent. And that, that is a beautiful thing. That gives you the flexibility and joy to engage with the things that at the end of your life you would otherwise wish you spent more time doing. At the end of your life, would you rather people say that you were rich or that you lived a meaningful life? Benjamin Franklin made this point in a letter to his mother when he said that at his funeral, he wants people to say that he lived a useful life more so than he wants them to say that he died rich. One of the greatest wisdoms that we can take away from personal finance and our behavior and relationship with money is that the love of money is the root of all evil. If we want money for the sake of money itself, what we're going to be doing is selling our souls for the sake of it. If you want money so that you can use it as a tool to become more of who you are and free yourself for your calling, for your purpose, and you can spend time with loved ones, your savings rate is what enables you to free your time and your life to live in a way that is genuinely beautiful and free of any and all regret. So is there such a thing as good debt and bad debt? In the context of Robert Kiyosaki's argument, I have to conclude, no. Debt is debt. Debt is promising away your future. And no matter how you shake it, it is important to free ourselves from it. There's a reason why the Bible says that the borrower becomes the slave to the lender, because you're basically promising away your future so that the lender has full control over your life as opposed to you having the freedom to live. Next week on the Hope Filled Financial Podcast, what we're going to be talking about is the problem of evil. The problem of evil is something that is very interesting as it applies to money, especially with the misconception that money is the root of all evil, while genuinely speaking, 
it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. Until then, budget bravely and enjoy your hope-filled financial future.